Insights. Welcome to MegaCon 2019, and we're here with Cave, and he is working with a company called Cave Geek Art. It's me. That is, that, me. That is me, yes. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about what your company does. Uh, well, uh, I make maps, mostly. Uh, I do it on traditional buckskin. It's basically deer skin that stand the same way it's been done for tens of thousands of years, all by hand. I used to tan it for a living and teach uh, primitive survival and stuff like that and stopped and started doing art instead. And what I do is unique because I use a combination of techniques and materials that create basically a three-dimensional relief map. And then I paint on top of that uh, with uh, natural pigments and primitive tools. So everything is done more or less caveman style, except for the burning, but. That's fantastic. I see a lot of game maps around here. I see a lot of movie maps. I mean, which one is your favorite? It's hard to say. I, I'm a nerd, so I, if I've made it, it's be mostly because I'm a fan of it. I started by, the, the, the first piece I ever made was a map of Middle Earth. And that's because I'm a big Middle Earth fan, I'm, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, and I just wanted to make one. So I, I did. So I would say probably Lord of the Rings is my favorite, Middle Earth. Okay, so what's the duration on that? Like how long does it take you to make a map? Oh. I mean, um, Most of the big ones take about 100 hours and up. Uh, I've done anything from just a few hours to 300 hours of work. So it just depends on the level of detail, the size, all that. What's the price on that? Um, <laughs> it, it can really vary, again, with how much time goes into it. So from several hundred to several thousand. Wow, that's phenomenal. Um, and I see some that are in color. Is that, a, is that an issue that adds with price too? It just takes more time, yeah. Uh, the burning part, when I do it all by hand, that, that's still faster than the painting. Painting, it just takes a lot longer. It's a lot slower. So the Witcher map, uh, for example, is the one that took 300 hours of work because it, every square inch of it is painted, and it's tiny detail. There, there are little guys on there that actually have a mustache, you know, that's tinier than a grain of rice. So uh, it takes a lot of time. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, is there any place that we can find you on social media or? Absolutely. Cave Geek Art on, on pretty much everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, on stream on Twitch every day almost when I'm at home. Uh, and even at conventions, I stream. So Cave Geek Art everywhere. CaveGeekArt.com is my website, my web store where you can get prints. So prints don't cost as much. <laughs> so those are good. And most people think that they are the real thing. Um, and yeah, YouTube as well. I, I, it's kind of not updated, but. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Well, you heard it here, Nerdites. We'll see you guys next time. Not done yet. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> want to tell us a little bit about D&D then? I told you, you're not, it's not going to be easy for you. Uh, so uh, there's another project that is kind of my, my brainchild, but there's a whole big team working on it of uh, half a dozen of us, artists, uh, chefs, photographers, and, and uh, graphic designers. It is basically a fantasy cooking blog on how to cook monsters, told by the, the most fabulous halfling chef in the realm called Alton Green. Uh, he, he has decades of experience cooking various monsters, and every month we publish uh, um, basically a short story of, half, of, of Alton's adventures and how he came about cooking a, ver a, a certain monster, whether it's a cave troll or pixies or whatever it is, owlbear. Uh, we publish a professionally designed recipe by a chef that you can cook at home for your group uh, with, with substitutes. If you can't find troll meat in your local grocery store, we'll tell you what you can use. And the third part of it is gaming content where you can actually do that in game. What, what happens to your character if it eats Cave Troll? Or sometimes if there's a monster that maybe nothing happens when you eat it, but we'll add other different things that relate to the story. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we've been going since January. Look up uh, uh, Flavor Text Adventures on Patreon. And uh, the content from January, the Cave Troll, is completely public and free. So download it, cook it, play with it. Let us know what you think and share it. Well, that's fantastic. So, do the food? Does the food that you eat add stats to your characters, like when you're playing? Yes. So, for example, uh, Cape Troll gave you night vision for 24 hours. Uh, Pixies, we just did Pixies, and I actually have to give credit to uh, Kenzer and Company, that I, as we published Nights at the Dinner Table and Hackmaster, they gave us permission to basically make April's story a reference to a storyline from the Nights at the Dinner Table from 20 years ago. 
called Pixie Meat, where uh, there's these tribes of elves that, that hunt pixies and eat them for their magic. So the whole story was a reference to that and the movie Predator. But uh, imagine Predator, but with pixies instead of a giant alien. Uh, so when you eat pixies, you, you actually get a boost in your levels for a while. But it also gives you a nasty hangover when it's done. So uh, we try to get creative and fun with it. <laughs> All right. So where can they find the uh, the D and D stuff? Uh, on Patreon, look for Flavor Text Adventures. Pat uh, Patreon.com forward slash Flavor Text Adventures, and you should find it. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic, Nerdites. You guys heard it. You heard where to find it. Uh, you know, we're gonna enjoy the rest of MegaCon today, and be right back at you real soon. <laughs>